How do you feel about the whole Mike Tyson thing, bro? Like, have you Coming seen back? Yeah, have you oh. seen his videos? <laughs> if you haven't noticed, you'll never see a video of him going straight for 30 seconds, like hitting the mitts oh, for 30 okay. seconds or the back. It's always quick little clips. So my mind is like, man, are they just showing these because he's maybe gassed? Now he's old. Right. right? What is his conditioning really That's like? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Miami on the Rocks, Casey Chops. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, at MIA on the Rocks. Follow us on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe button. Today's guest, you know we have a huge fighting culture here in South Florida, Broward, Miami-Dade. So, you know, I like to seek out the people that matter within that culture, the people that are cutting through. And I have Kevin Gleason in here. I appreciate you coming through, brother. Appreciate you having me, man. Yes, sir. And, man, you're one of the, you know, there's... This culture, let's speak on the fight culture here in South Florida because it seems like there's so many people that just, what is it about South Florida that you think just like cuts through, you know? You know what, man? It's uh, one of those things. I think MMA really catapulted, um, you know, South Florida as, as a bigger um, area for fight camps because mm -hmm. you have American Top Team. It's a huge, you know, their main headquarters is out here in, uh, I think it's Coral Springs mm -hmm. or. Coconut Creek, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, you have MMA Masters in Miami. So you have a lot of you know big gyms um, mm -hmm. right here in South Florida. So I think that's what brings a lot of guys out here to do it. I, I think the humidity, the heat, mm -hmm. et cetera. So I think that's what draws guys down here to, um, to South Florida for their camps. Yeah. Is this something about like just like South Florida where there's the humidity that just breeds like aggression? Because like we're cool with football. It's like everything that has to be like with aggression, like we lead in that. I don't know what it is. I say that all the time, man. It must be the heat. It's the same thing in California because yeah. the heat just makes, you know, people a little bit more aggravated for some reason. <laughs> so it definitely builds some yeah. character out here, you know? Dang, that's what's up, bro. So how to how, can let's speak on your beginnings. Where does this where does it start for you in this world? So for me, I've always kind of um growing up, I, I played a ton of sports Are you from here i'm from here yeah okay. i'm born and raised uh i was born in houndale but pretty much raised okay. in parent pines okay so um growing up i was playing baseball hockey uh i started boxing at about 13 that's when the interest kind of came in um i started boxing at Pembroke pines Palace, that's where i started off about 13 mm -hmm. i think 13 14 something like that just doing it because of the competitiveness and mm -hmm. something that i enjoyed you know just the nature of just being aggressive as a kid you know mm -hmm. um and I always tell guys, believe it or not, it was one of those things that it didn't really pick up for me until I got a little bit older. I was always mm -hmm. on and off with it. Like gotcha. when I got in high school, I was wrestling, I was playing hockey, you know, baseball, everything. So I boxed, I played all these different sports, but then I completely stopped boxing, had zero interest in it all through high school. Cause you know, you're a kid, you're growing up chasing mm -hmm. girls, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And there's no um, like boxing team on high, in high school either, right? Like, yeah, there's no boxing team. Yeah. It was, you know, it was one of those things. Boxing wasn't, at that time, it wasn't really that popular down here. Mm -hmm. um, so from there, I actually got back into it when I was like probably in my early twenties, around 20, 22, 23. Mm -hmm. Started kind of just wanting to train a little bit um getting into gyms and stuff like that so i knew guys that i had boxed with when i was younger had a couple of gyms um and then what started me off coaching was um a gym out in plantation i was going over there just you know kind of training doing my own thing mm -hmm. and the owner was a friend of mine a guy by the name of scott mcadam mm -hmm. he was like a former world champion kickboxer and muay thai guy mm -hmm. and he would pay me 20 bucks to just hold mitts for him he kind of taught me the fundamentals of like holding mitts and coaching a little bit. And over the years, I knew boxing pretty well. So that's kind of how it just took a hold of itself. And then from there, you know, I had another guy that from his gym was like, hey, would you would you hold mitts for me? Mm -hmm. And like I said, it was like, a you know, I was making nothing. Sometimes it would just be free. Sometimes I'd make 20 bucks, 10 bucks, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then just built to what it is now. Did you have like did you want to be a boxer and then you're like okay let me just transition to a coach or did those aspirations kind of stop no i never really had aspirations of being a fighter to be okay. honest with you man it was one of those things that really just took a hold of its own like mm. i started off just kind of helping him out mm -hmm. and then i helped one of his fighters um who i still am contact with right now um i started helping him and then mm -hmm. from him became miguel baeza mm -hmm. um and it was just basically me and Miguel for probably about two, three years just training together. And as he started winning fights, mm -hmm. you know, my growth started coming from there, you know, really. So how many years in the game coaching? 
Uh, about seven. Eight? Seven. Okay, seven, so eight. I think it, it's accurate to say around seven or eight years ago was when the UFC kind of... That was the shift, uh, man. Right, when you started, kind of, right? Yeah, that was the shift for me. I, I mean, I was just a boxing coach, but... How did you judge those guys? Because because a lot of they have, like, you know, hostility for each other in the art and yeah, how they it's feel. funny. Um, you know, I love MMA. You know, as, as I've gotten a little bit more accustomed to teaching MMA fighters, you mm -hmm. know, boxing, I've enjoyed the sport a little bit more because I just feel like... There's a little bit more action. The best guys are fighting the best guys. Mm. Um, Did you dismiss it at first? No, like when I it never, first. No, I never really dismissed. I was always open minded to it. Gotcha. And believe it or not, you know, I was I was helping out amateur boxers. I went back to the Pines Pal mm -hmm. that I started out as a kid, and I was working with a couple of little amateur boxers. And um, my first real fighter was Miguel Baeza, mm. uh, who's in the UFC right now. So he was at that time, he was one and zero, or when I first met him, he hadn't had any pro fights. We, you know, we would talk every now and again. I trained him like two times, and he was 1-0. and And he was like the first guy that I started training. And then as he started winning fights, <clears throat> everybody else kind of started. We started catching traction that way. You know what I mean? I, I, I say it all the time. Any interview or anything that I've done, is, is it started with me and him. Nobody cared about the two of us, you know, as far as, you know, gyms or, you know, promotions, et cetera. And we just yeah. built it like that mm -hmm. what, what do you what is it about mma do you think that kind of like gave it rain over regular boxing is it like the, the business mechanics of it like yeah. how you said the vice fighters are so it's not just about the fighting and the art of it it's about the business side of it yeah too well. I, I think that you know they mma kind of took the blueprint of boxing and the things that they didn't like from it there's so many promoters there's so many people in the hands of boxing that they just kind of you know really if you think mma you think ufc but there's right. Bellator, there's a couple other smaller promotions, but they made it, you know, one show. You know, they kind of monopolized the game in that sense. Everybody's mm -hmm. trying to make it to that big show, the UFC. Mm -hmm. So with boxing, you have, you know, Golden Boy, you have Top Rank, you know, mm -hmm. you have The Zone now. Um, there's a, a bunch of different promotions you could be at. So you know who the best guy is in MMA in right. any weight class. Whoever right. that champion is, that's the best guy. Sorry. Right. And, um, in, in boxing, it's, you know, you got five different world champions. You yeah, know, four I, different feel, champions. I feel like we need some good heavyweights. Like, that era of, like, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about Mike Tyson coming back. Yeah. But the era of Mike Tyson and the, and, and the Roy Jones and, like, you know, those heavyweights. And you would see knockouts. And, you know, I'm not, I don't want to knock Floyd Mayweather. You know what I mean? But yeah. they're not the most exciting fights to watch. It's crazy, know? man. It's like the normal human being in boxing is, like, at 147 pounds. I think that's nuts. You know what yeah. I mean? Like... I mean, I, I'm walking around at six foot, 200 pounds, and I right. felt like I was kind of an average. But for a long time, the you know the 147 pound division with Floyd and everything, that's where everybody was really at. Right. Um, I like Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think that he's kind of bringing boxing back, the funness, the antics. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's he's a guy who. You know, he doesn't really finish fights away violently the way a lot of these right. guys do. That, you know? that, how we got used to in the '90s. Yeah. So it's like, and then UFC, MMA came and that gave us that excitement that we were missing from boxing, you know? So yeah, for sure. I wonder if it'll ever come back, if it'll ever, you know what I mean? I don't know. They said Anthony Joshua was supposed to be doing it. Wow. So do you, uh, are, are, are you training, is it mostly MMA fighters now? Or At do this you have point, yeah. It's, I have some, I have, a, you know, a stable of fighters, um, but majority of them I would say are MMA guys. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just purely teaching them the fundamentals of boxing. Um, I'm just doing it kind of different in the sense of, I'm teaching boxing. I'm teaching MMA boxing, if that makes any sense. I was going to ask you, like, what's the difference? The range is more so the difference, but I just feel like where I can capitalize on is boxing is people. A lot of people don't do boxing in MMA. It's right. just kickboxing, Muay Thai. Right. You know, they consider that their stand up art. So I, I see a lot of fundamental flaws in a lot of guys stand up. And I think that's where I've kind of been able to capitalize with some of my mm -hmm. fighters in MMA. That's why I've had some, you know, some luck there. Um, so it's, it's more so just a range thing in boxing versus mm -hmm. MMA. You know, you're obviously got a four ounce glove on as opposed to an eight or a 10. Right. You know, so that, that plays a big hold in it. But, um, right. I'd say I have, you know, I have Blake Davis, who's a boxer, you know, I trained Roberto Duran Jr. Um, those are like my boxers. I have a couple amateurs like Eric Tudor. Mm -hmm. Um, but majority of my stable is MMA guys, you know, my popular guys, at least. Uh, who was the first... You know, 
Who would you say your first like claim to fame is that maybe you 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 trained him and and he the first guy that was on the big stage that you trained and you got to Miguel him. Baeza for sure. I mean okay. I've been training uh Marlon Marais, okay, who's fighting tomorrow night in Abu Dhabi. We're gonna touch event. on that too. Um but Miguel kind of like I said, I started him, it was legitimately at one pro fight. Nobody heard of him, nobody really wanted to give him a shot. Mm -hmm. um and then you know he signed to um a local promotion that's not around right now mm -hmm. as he won it legitimately went from me and him we would spend hours in the gym i didn't have clients mm -hmm. it was just me and him and we would spend four or five hours in the gym training and as he won again i took that traction you know more people would you know start messaging me through instagram or get my number from him mm -hmm. um and then it was i think the the growth was probably the most special part and the most important part because i could sit here and tell you there, anybody who's a trainer or knows some things about boxing that considers himself a coach mm -hmm. can take a great fighter and you know and coast to the top. Mm -hmm. I took him from you know being one and zero, oh, right? You know what I mean. So we built to that level of the UFC, and now he's you know he's undefeated. He's nine and zero oh with eight knockouts. Um, <clears throat> he's he's two and zero oh in the UFC. Technically three and zero oh because he, he won his spot on the contender. So I'd say you know he's probably the the most my proudest. Fighter, right. you know what I mean? Right. So when it comes to like, you know, getting ready for a fight, how do you, you know, is this something where you go over game tape, game tape, fighting tape of, of, you know, maybe his opponent that he's about to face and you kind of, you guys plan like a strategy together or how do, how do you approach that? Yeah. When we, someone's um, getting ready for a fight. We'll do that. We, we break down tape. Mm -hmm. Um, we kind of, you know, in the beginning it's hard, man. When, mm -hmm. when guys are fighting locally, mm -hmm. you know, there's not a lot of tape on guys, etc. But as they get a little bit, you know, more popular, you can find anything on YouTube these days. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll just go over tape. We'll break down some of the things that that we like that we can capitalize on. Some of their flaws. We'll work on some of the things that we feel like we need to improve on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we try to leave no stone unturned. So that's a big thing. Like um, he just fought Matt Brown a couple months back and we noticed mm -hmm. that he had he was dropping his right hand. He would come in, you know, dropping his right hand every time he would throw that left hook or he'd attack with that straight right. So that was something we wanted to capitalize on throwing that hook or mm -hmm. stepping off throwing the hook. So yeah, we try to find little holes in their game to capitalize on big time. Um, so whenever I'm, I'm one of my guys, if I'm a student of the game in general. So mm -hmm. if I got any tape on you, I'm gonna try to figure you out fast. Oh yeah. man, so for, for Marlon um, Morais, right? Yeah. What is, what is the strategy that you guys have going into his fight? So he's fighting, um, it's Corey Sanhagen. I hope I got his name. It's either Corey or Cody. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to get dude. the opponent's name right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right there you go. He's um he's a taller opponent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're fighting taller opponents, you know, you want to use a lot of feints to get in. You want to draw out their offense because, you know, they're 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 tall. They can hit you from a long mm -hmm. range. I always said that the longest, tallest fighters are the best guys. Really? Because I, <laughs> I went to my first boxing class the other day. Yeah. And it's just, uh, I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm, it felt like, I don't know if I, are, are tall guys good at boxing usually? Yeah, man. Because it feels like you can't get low. It feels like I can't, I don't know. It's just breaking down. Like, you know, over time, you'll get more and more comfortable with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but you have that range. You can mm -hmm. hit a guy from a mile away, you know? Mm -hmm. So with the, with, with the Marlin fight, a lot of it is just using his feints to get in there. There's a big pieces of it. There's pieces that I can't touch. I'm only a boxing coach, but oh, okay. as far as wrestling and everything else. But from my standpoint, with what I try to do with him is... You know, we worked a lot on feints, using his speed, um, closing the distance, being in close, you know, going to the body and then coming up tall. Because if mm -hmm. I attack you to the body, I'm going to drop your head down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I if I throw the jab to the body, I can come up top. Mm -hmm. Little things like that, getting um, not letting him press us back, stuff like that. We just went over, you know, we mm -hmm. just repetitively push that whether we were working mitts or sparring. Mm -hmm. So we try to bring in, you know, I brought in... Um, uh eric tudor who's about the same size as his opponent mm -hmm. for his sparring and stuff which was perfect sparring for him he you know he learned how to you know get get away from the jab get in the range use the jab up and down feints etc for and uh, so there's a lot of and i know some there's a lot of these young kids that their, their their aspirations are to be in mma and ufc and what do you tell the kid you know who who's maybe starting out what's the best route for him to take what should he focus on in if, mma yeah i say wrestling yeah, that's yeah. like the key. If you could wrestle and you could wrestle good, you could beat you know most guys you fight. I truly feel that way. Like I see, because so you're saying the you're the boxing guy. Yeah, and you're you're actually admitting that that's not even really the yeah man the wrestling. Because if you can get a guy down, and hold him there. Right. There's nothing he can do. Right. I mean, we've all seen those fights. You know, George St. Pierre. 
And you mean like jujitsu as well, right? I or, say more wrestling, okay. but you know, you have to have your grappling. You don't want to get submitted when you get a guy down, but you look at a guy like George St. Pierre, he reigned for years. Now you got that guy, Khabib, mm -hmm. same thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He gets you down and it's a, it's a wrap from there. He's going to hold you there. He's going to beat on you, you know, like a drum. So I'd say wrestling is probably the first um, step to to developing your game in MMA and then maybe mm -hmm. you know you want to start learning your fundamentals of everything you want to be well-rounded mm -hmm. in MMA mm -hmm. how do you feel about the whole Mike Tyson thing bro like have Coming you seen back yeah have you I'm, seen his videos <laughs> with, you know what here's how I feel and again it's a student of the game right mm -hmm. I've always been a Roy Jones fan okay so I want Roy Jones to win regardless that was a guy who kind of like got me into boxing like I I watched all his videos I could growing up okay. and I want to be just like Roy Jones mm -hmm. So I think if you're asking me who I who I think is gonna win, yeah, or just yeah, or just I what think, you feel I about the fight. I got Roy Jones winning. I think he's been more active. He's okay. younger. Um, Mike Tyson was a heavyweight, you know, his whole career. So he took those, you know, heavyweight fights. So he's how old are these guys? These guys are like in their fifty-three 50s. and yeah. like forty-nine or fifty or something like that. I'm not oh. even sure their ages, but it's crazy in general. But yeah. um, bro, I saw a video. It was a Joe Rogan and Mike Tyson said he scares the shit out of me. He said, "Yo, I, I get erections when I think about hurting people." Yeah, I'm like nuts. Jesus, bro. Yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> I've been in some, I've been in the gym with some crazy dudes. You know, it, it's all they know. Mm -hmm. You know, and if if they're a true fighter in the sense that you know that's the product that they came from, that's all they ever knew mm -hmm. you know and if you're great at it you become obsessed with it and then you don't know anything else outside of that do you think that's like a uh you know like a true parallel as far as like the guys that have like that aggressive personality does it translate into fighters or do you know some laid back guys that'll whoop your ass like i know some super laid back dudes mm -hmm. that'll you know that are bad dudes you yeah know? so it's, it's just kind of the personality thing i know some quiet guys that are killers and i know mm -hmm. some you know some aggressive dudes that are killers too yeah you know, well, Mike, you know, he's just a special case, man. He's yeah. just a bad dude. Um, That's going to be crazy. But as far as those videos goes, if you haven't noticed, you'll never see a video of him going straight for 30 seconds, like hitting the mitts oh, for 30 okay. seconds or the back. It's always quick little clips. So my mind is like, man, are they just showing these because he's maybe gassing? Now, he's old. You right. Know what what is his conditioning really That's like? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Think about being 50. And, yeah. and, you know, hitting the mitts and hitting the bag and everything else like that at that pace. So yeah. my mind is like they're only showing these small little videos. How many rounds reason. are they going? I think it's, it's like six or something or yeah. eight maybe. It's yeah. an exhibition exhibition fight. They're going to make money. So it's good for yeah, everybody. Like, We're all going to tune in. They're going to make some money. Yeah. It'll be fun to see, you know. That's dope, bro. So you got you got your own gym now, right? I do. Um, mm -hmm. I got it with um, my partner, Jeff Bortz. Okay. And it's called... Um, Stay Ready Athletics. I see it all the time on your Instagram. Yeah, so. my program is Stay Ready Athletics. He's Bay to Bay Boxing. Okay, so is, that's not the name of the gym. No, nah, we're just uh, yeah. we don't even have a name yeah. like that. You know, it's yeah. just our program. How long has it been open? How long is? I've been. So I opened up my first gym back in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a small 700 square foot spot out in um, Tamarac. It was mm -hmm. like a little warehouse space. Um, from there, four months into that, I kind of outgrew that hopped into a, a 1400 square foot spot was there for a year and then we jumped into this spot over in hollywood oh dope so i've been around coaching owning my own spot since 2018. nice this spot i think we moved in in january okay yeah. dope. you said it was in hollywood yeah it's right over in hollywood right outside of a uh, young circle okay dope i said this the other day i was like yo i hate nice gyms i want i want my gym to like like the ac kind of not work I want the, the weights to be a little rusted. I want to feel like I'm in jail when I work out. It's, like, I don't like... Yeah, it's 50-50. <laughs> yeah. Because some people love that, like, boutique style. That's, like, real big right now. Before yeah. this, you know, this whole pandemic had took off like that, boxing was, like, a $5 billion a year business, mm -hmm. you know, because people were loving those boutique style gyms where it's mm -hmm. real clean and, you know what I mean? Like, right. it was, you know, you had your locker, you had everything in there, right. the showers, et cetera. Yeah, don't give me that gym. Yeah. I feel the same way. I, yeah. I won't, I don't, uh, you know, so it's hard. So you want to attract that clientele because that, there's the money there. Right. You know, but you also want, you know, your fighters in there as well. Right. So we got Kevin Gleason here, bro. Please tell everybody where they can follow you, find you on social media. You can find me at um, Kevin underscore Gleason seven on Instagram. I don't use Facebook. I just use uh, one platform for my social media. Okay. Don't. You know? And and you have people that come to you as far as obviously you train professional boxers who are getting ready for big fights, but do you have you have the regular person who just wants to learn how to defend themselves? Yeah, uh, that's majority of the clientele that I have. Mm -hmm. um, I probably got about like 
five or six fighters, guys come and go. Um, mm-hmm. But my clientele base is, you know, just the fitness people that that mm-hmm. just look for, you know, the art of boxing, mm-hmm. but just want to get in shape. Yeah. I have a lot of that. I have probably about 15, 15 clients or so. Have you ever thought about getting into like the business side? Cause I'm like maybe for throwing, like being a promoter almost. Like nah, in that I, sense? I, I, one of my fighters, Blake Davis promotes his own, <clears throat> his own show. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I was never really into that side, man. That takes a lot of work and a lot of yeah. energy, man. And, you know, I think in personal training in general, you can get burned out real easy. So mm-hmm. I think I try to keep it limited to just training. Mm-hmm. Do you like the business side of it? I'm sure it's, you know, sh- shady like every other business, but. I don't like the, the business side of fighting in general, I feel like is a, is a shady side, anything, you know, MMA or boxing. So I think that, you know, we were talking um, off air about, mm-hmm you know, the, the fixed fights and stuff like that. I've never seen that personally, but you see the A side, B side, and you know what side you're really on. Mm-hmm. If you're the opponent or you're that main guy. Mm-hmm. So guys, you know, I've seen guys go in there and take a beating because that's what, you know, the new trend is that right now, what I see in MMA, it used to be boxing. <clears throat> you're kind of padding your record. So when you start out and you're a young pro and you're 18, 19, if you got a good promoter, they're going to get you, you know, these, these fights that you're supposed to win, these guys mm-hmm. that you're supposed to beat. Mm-hmm. I see MMA is doing the same thing. You know, they're they're flying in guys and or they're flying you out to fight. It, it's a, a weird trend that's going on right now where in MMA you're fighting these guys you're supposed to beat and they're patting their records. Personally, the way I feel, mm-hmm. they're patting their records to get onto contenders because that's what's going to get you into the UFC. So what promoters like just fly in some bozo to that they're yeah. that just going to be yep flying to get the I'll win. Punch, I'll punch it back. You know, yeah. I, mean? I see a lot of that. So. Um, it was always in boxing. That was mm-hmm. always an old thing, mm-hmm. you know, but now it's going down in MMA, at least what I see here locally. But is there any money in those small fights? Nah, like those, you don't make fights. any money. Yeah. You want to, you definitely want to build a guy up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't want to throw him right to the wolves. Right. You know, you want to build him up, make his confidence. Now it's pro. So it's a little bit different. You know, there's no headgear in boxing. There's no headgear. The gloves are smaller, etc. cetera. In MMA, there's no shin pads. You know, you can elbow mm-hmm. stuff like that. But you know, you want to do a fight that makes some sense at some point. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't want to see you be six, seven, and zero, oh, and you haven't fought anybody but some guy off the street. Right, and that's what no one really thinks about when they see seven and zero. Oh, they just see seven and zero. Oh. They don't yeah. think about who you fought. The same thing in college football. Yep. <laughs> you see a team yeah. ten and zero, oh, you don't realize you just. There's tons of that, man. There's tons of guys out there like I'm 10, 11, 12 and zero, oh, and it's like who have you fought though? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I believe in fights that make sense. You know, Got I want to bring my guy up right, but I don't want to. I don't want to throw him in there too early, but I don't want him to be up beating up some guy that's one in sixteen. Right, right. You know. Yeah. Damn, bro. Do you have any crazy stories as far as that goes? Like, you know, just things f- fighting. Have you had anyone like do any dirty shit to any of your your boxers nah. or any? I've been involved in like I've never had anything crazy like that. Um, I've been involved in like bad cuts, stuff like that, like. Um, you know, I was cornering Chris Biosa for his first fight. He got his head split wide open from an elbow down to his bone. I was surprised Jeez. they didn't stop that fight because, I mean, there was a point where going in the third round, I came inside the cage. The, 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 the canvas was all black. I was wearing white Adidas shoes. And I remember looking down. You could smell the iron, the blood just Jeez. leaking. That, it was that, that bad, the aroma of that just pure iron just leaking. Wow. Um, we're working on his cut and I remember like looking down for a second. I don't know if it was to grab the bucket or more water and I'm just standing in a, a pure puddle of like blood. my white shoes are just bloody. Filled, yeah, blood. Damn. So, and they let that one slide, you know? Yeah. It's a Florida it, fighting commission for you, man. The boxing commission. Yeah. So. Because uh, every sport is getting soft, whether it's football, basketball. So it's like people are craving that, that, you know yeah, what I mean? hundred like, percent. I just. Um, but as far as being involved in anything dirty. Mm-hmm. Nah, I've never, um, I've never seen anything or, or been involved in anything like that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm fortunate that I, I've trained some good fighters, so we're always kind of the A side of things. We're not really on the B side where mm-hmm. they're trying to screw us over. You know, right. something I'm doing, you know, that I've been involved in the last year or so is I don't know if you've seen the bare knuckle um, fighting. Mm-hmm. No. You haven't seen that? No, nah, man. Oh man, you got to check that out. What do you mean, like it's bare knuckle? Like we're talking like Kimbo in the backyard and Southwest well, Miami type shit. You, they wrap your hands. It's um, it's two fingers from your knuckle. Oh. It's it's an actual. It's BKFC. So a fight that I'm actually I've been training Jim Allers. We were four and zero right now with three stoppages in uh in bare knuckle. So he's fighting for the world title November fourteenth. So that I've seen some crazy stuff. I've been involved bare in some knuckle, crazy. Geez. Your bare knuckle fight is five two minute rounds. It's nuts. 
Holes. you know and, and initially i had said no, I, jim's a guy i grew up with mm -hmm. we've known each other since we were in high school mm -hmm. so he was wrestling i was boxing and um i've trained him for years now mm -hmm. and he he's retired he fought in the ufc he's fought all over the world mm -hmm. um and he's like hey man bare knuckle reached out to me they want to you know want to give me a fight i'm like absolutely not man i had seen one of them and i'm like i would never train somebody for something i wouldn't do right so um he was like well you know what's your schedule looking like i'm like dude i'm not i'm not yeah, getting involved in I'm that not like that, i love yeah. you to death and you know i i told him don't even sign that contract mm -hmm. sure yeah. enough that that was on a friday on monday he's like hey what's your schedule and i'm like i knew immediately because i've known him since we were 16 years mm -hmm. old you know i'm 34 now so he's mm -hmm. like I, he's like what's your schedule i'm like do you sign that contract he's like i signed it and it was like three and a half weeks and i'm like send over the contract then i'll train you for the fight like i mm. want to see if he really signed. if he really signed it. and he did holy and we got right to it and it was a crazy you know it's a crazy world in bare knuckle you got to mm. watch it to to kind of understand i mean these guys are really fighting bare knuckle yeah you know and we didn't know what we were kind of getting ourselves into his mentality is like let's just do one of them mm -hmm. you know we, we took a fight it was like i think we it was a four-week camp Mm -hmm. he knocked the guy out in 45 seconds have you ever been to one of those because like you know like we said the fight culture is big here even down south like pinecrest like where kimbo's from you know they'd have backyards have you ever been to one of those <laughs> i've never been to one of those yeah. man i always say if, if you if you kind of check me out on instagram i'm kind of i say i'm like a mechanic in the sense mm -hmm. of hands mechanic that's dope you like that's that right yeah, yeah, it I, it's you kind of come in i try to stay away from the fight world like that you know um i just don't like you like the integrity of it and like the I art like the of it. sport and the art of it. I love teaching it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as you know, being involved in all the the politics of fighting, gotcha. I'm not really. You know, I don't just come. We get work. I'll teach you some things. You know, if I'm cornering you locally, mm -hmm. I, I'll fly out for your fights. It all kind of depends on what it is, but um, nah, I try to stay you know away from the fight world like that. You gotcha. know, and that might not make sense to others, but for me, it's mm -hmm. just like oh, I enjoy. I I have a business to run, so I. I'm mm. constantly busy training guys and stuff like that. So, um, no, nah, I've never done, I've never been to any of those. And I've, you know, I've done the bare knuckle thing with Jim now. So yeah. that, it, that's as real as it gets, you know, it's all on TV, it's all on pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So what is it like running, you know, the gym day to day? Are you, like you said, you were, shout out to my boy, Mike from E Clean. He was doing, um, do you do group stuff? Or you do more one-on-one -on -one stuff? So, Are you on the Zoom calls? Yeah, doing I, I was doing that for a little bit yeah. when everything went, took off, but, um, my business is, you know, I believe in the details of the work. So mm -hmm. I don't do big classes. I do four, three to four man classes. That way I can give you and anybody that's in the class the detail work that they need. And then I do private one on ones. Mm -hmm. So uh, I call them blitz sessions, like the four, four man sessions. So running the business is crazy, man. Um, most people don't know, but I have a full time job, mm -hmm. you know, so I run my morning sessions, mm -hmm. my two sessions in the morning. I shower at the gym. I go to work. I work my, you know, my nine to five. Mm -hmm. I go straight back to the gym and I run it from six thirty to ten. Really? Yeah. So, oh, and I do that Monday through Friday, and then Saturday I do my ten a.m. to to two o'clock. You oh, know, shit. so I'm I'm like twenty four yeah. seven. Wow. You know, but um, it's a great business, man. It's just I have a great job, you mm -hmm. know, and it just so happened to be like I've been at my job for ten plus years, so mm -hmm. I wasn't willing to throw that away for the gym, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and the gym is kind of what gives me my balance in life. Like, I love doing it. The second it becomes a career like anything else, it's not as fun. Right. I was going to say, do you see yourself transitioning to try to make that your full-time thing? Like, I could have done it a billion times. You know, I actually make more money now at this point in the gym than I do at my job. It's just, um, for me personally, I don't ever want to be pressured to, to do things, to take clients, to stay later, to come earlier, to make mm -hmm. the ends meet. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah. um and I'm, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I do 20, anywhere from 20 to 25 personal training sessions a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that full-time job, so, you know, so it's, it's a lot, you know, but um, I love the business side of it. It just, you know, it, it can become, I can only imagine because there's times where I deal with that burnout, mm -hmm. you know, it could only, I can only imagine just doing it full-time. I probably get burned right. out of it. You know what I mean? Right. It, I don't want it to be that, like, I depend on everything, the bills, everything off that, you know? Right. That's how I feel about DJing sometimes, you know. I get it, man. So who's who's uh, uh, if 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 someone asks Kevin, yo, who's gonna be the next guy in five years, four or five years? Who would you say? Is there someone young that you see that you Miguel by bet, yeah, yeah, bet all the for sure. Yeah, I mean, right now he's undefeated. He, the kid works hard, and I'm not just saying that because I brought him up. Mm -hmm. You know, he works hard. 
You know, mm-hmm. he's he's tough as nails. I've never trained anybody who hits as hard as him. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. He's, you know, he's 9-0, eight mm-hmm. knockouts. He stopped, you know, eight opponents. He's a bad mm-hmm. dude. So I would say he's a future, you know. But other than that, that I train, mm-hmm. uh, Tifima Lopez, okay. who's fighting uh, Lomachenko next week. Okay. You know, he's – um. He he actually is. I think he was born in Brooklyn, but he was raised out here. He came out through the local scenes. That kid's the next. Like in my opinion, I say he's the next Floyd Mayweather. Really? What's yeah. his name? Tifima Lopez. Tifima. Tifima. Yeah, he's fighting uh, Lomachenko Tifima. next okay. week. Okay. On ESPN, he's okay. a bad kid too, man. So, um, yeah, he's somebody yeah. to look out for big time. Oh. Yeah. So I got Kevin Gleason in here. Is there any other? Um, is there are there a lot of like big time trainers here? A lot of big uh, big time names here. There's um more so in MMA, I think. Oh, okay. You know, but there's some good there's some great coaches out here. I think with boxing, it's more the fighter than the than the trainer themselves. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um and that was something that I guess that I, I also want to steer away from in my business mm-hmm. was I kind of wanted to go off of um I think often, you know, yeah, the fighters are important, you need the fighters and stuff like that, but I wanted to be the the necessity. Like you need to come to me. Right. You know, not vice versa. And I see a lot of trainers chasing fighters and trace, chasing talent. I didn't want to be like that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I wanted to be the guy you came to, like a Freddie Roach or a Robert Garcia. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so what do you have to do to, to, to become that? Like, how do you feel like you work yourself into that space to where people come to you? I mean, you got people, like you said, undefeated that you're training. I think it's just, you know, kind of sticking to your fundamentals and your, you know, what's important to you, your mm-hmm. blueprint of your business. You know, mm-hmm. for me... I wanted to bridge the gap between fighters and fitness clients. You Mm -hmm. know, I didn't care about just training fighters. I wanted to do both because I feel like I'm going to show you how good I am by taking somebody from the ground up rather Mm -hmm. than, like I said, being, you know, there's a lot of, especially in the fight game, there's a ton of talent pimps out there Mm -hmm. that just, hey, man, Casey's great at what he does. Mm -hmm. Let's bring him in. But you've Mm -hmm. already been at it for years. Yeah. Somebody else brought you up. Right. You know, so... I like that. Like, I like that approach where I'm taking somebody from the ground up, mm-hmm. you know. So I've been fortunate, like I said, you know, I brought Miguel up and that was what brought in guys, you know, that these top guys like like a Marlon Rice, mm-hmm. you know, um, like Jim Allers, like these guys that have come to me through that, that they say, hey, man, this guy knows what he's doing. You know, Marlon Marais is he's ranked number one in the world, mm-hmm. you know. So have you ever had like a casual, you know, client that just wanted to come in and just maybe do a workout and then you saw potential in them and you were like, bro, you might need to like take this a little serious or have you ever thought about taking it serious? Uh, there's a, a girl that I trained Bree. She's really talented mm-hmm. um, with her, though. She, you know, she has a great job. She's a nurse. I didn't mm. want her to really. <laughs> can't, like, I didn't want yeah. her taking damage, but. She had extreme talent. I mean, she hits like a, a, a straight up dude. Yeah. You know, and I'm not even exaggerating when I say she hits yeah. like a dude. She hits like a dude. You know, she could stop guys out there with her right hand. So, yeah, yeah I've had a couple of those. You know, there's guys that want to come in and, you know, initially at first it's, hey, I just want to learn to, you know, box and mm-hmm. work out. And then, you know, they they switch over and they're like, hey, I want to take a couple of amateur fights. Mm-hmm. So I've had that. You know, I, I've been lucky where I've brought up a lot of guys to – um to from the fitness side just the cardio side to to actually competing mm-hmm. you know i had um a guy lou duran a lot of guys come to me and they say hey i want to learn to fight and i want to compete mm-hmm. and i've taken them from the ground up i have rob sanfilippo who was like that he owns uh hydro life water services okay I don't know if you heard this, his office it's is actually familiar. down the street from here um he's like hey i want to take i have my business i want to um i want to take a couple fights i want to win a local amateur mma belt let's do it Never fought, you know, now he's five or six and oh, mm-hmm. you know, he has uh, two belts from in the 170 division and the 185 division. Wow. He wants to go pro now, but uh, mm-hmm. so it, it didn't just stop at amateurs. I had uh, Lou Duran. Mm-hmm. He was another guy who's, you know, um, a fitness dude who just wanted to, you know, take a couple of fights. You know, we've, we've done one fight now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's one and oh, you know, it, yeah, but guys, once they start seeing their development, boxing gives you all kinds of, um, confidence mm-hmm. you know what i mean especially as you grow and you get better and better with it so yeah man I, I always have that i've been lucky enough to that people have believed in me enough to want to fight under me you mm-hmm. know what i mean and be trained by me and then fight under me damn that's dope man. yeah man we got kevin gleason in here there so you, you want to shout out any fighters you want to shout out maybe you know your your, your top five that you're training right now it's Mar- marlon uh, marais is fighting tomorrow night right. you can tune in on uh i think it's espn plus 
Mm-hmm. He's fighting um, Corey St. Hennig in the main event. Um, I got Jim Allers who's fighting Louis Palomino November 14th for the world title, the BKFC uh, world title. We're still waiting on the day for um, Miguel. Rob Sampolipo will be fighting, hopefully, if everything goes through with this whole quarantine and, you know, the pandemic and whatnot, hopefully mm-hmm. he'll be fighting um, at Sway in mm-hmm. December. And uh, Roberto Duran Jr. is fighting in New Hampshire November 14th, the same day, actually, Jim is. Mm-hmm. Um, so look out for those fights. There it is. Anyone else, anything else you want to promote? You got the, the Kevin Gleason clothing line coming? You got anything? You know what we're, uh, we're working on right now? We're working on the Stay Ready training camp. So it's a digital online training program we're actually in the process of doing right now so it'll be a subscription based where you can get um initial hour and a half of of pure content boxing content learning the fundamentals of the jab doing bag work um (laughs) bro it's crazy because i was youtubing that's exact same shit that's it yeah and uh it'll be about an hour and a half of all that like the fundamentals how to stand proper footwork things that i do in the gym with my fighters Mm -hmm. my fitness clients and then every week i'll be uploading a new video of about 10 to 15 minutes of content every single week and then i'm gonna go off of the uh what is it the clients only or only clients I'm gonna I'm gonna use that spin where it's uh, oh. it's uh, wait 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 <laughs> what is it fans only fans only, only. fans, yeah, only fans. Yeah, whatever yeah, these yeah, girls yeah, are doing yeah, yeah. And stuff I'm gonna go off that spin but I'm gonna do clients only where I'm gonna go off of a live you every month I'm gonna go live with all my clients oh, so shit. you're gonna be able to you know do an actual training session live Dope. um through that through you screen oh there's some. Hey, I know some girls that have OnlyFans, bro, and they're making like fourteen thousand yeah, a man, month, I'm, and I'm they hoping. need to shoot content, bro. We maybe we could do a little yeah, boxing I'm thing at the to make gym. Some money you know over there, like, like that, man. I'm trying to we'll make talk that after kind this. of money, man. We'll, we'll talk I'm trying after. to make that uh, that kind of hey, money. Hey, women you know? are winning right now, bro. Yeah, they are. Yes, I, they are. Now's the time. I always tell men, like, now is the time to invest in women yep. right now. Like, they're killing bro. it, man. Yes, sir, Kevin. I appreciate you coming through, my brother. Appreciate you, Thank you for coming by. And there it is, Kevin Gleason, baby. Bam.